various things. That's project management. Is oh man, do we have to listen to me talk? <laughs> that sounds terrible. You guys are paying for this class? It's ridiculous. How are you? Sorry, I have been working. I'm like. Um. So this is Ian. I mean, basically, I just lectured on radio production and overall kind of commercial and public radio production. Okay. Um. And then talked about um NPR and kind of live and pre-recorded, and then I talked about Ken Benson, who listened to your show. And was like, this guy's amazing. No, totally, Ken Benson is. Um, he's no, the sure. he's the NPR news director oh, at okay. ABCR. Right. The always awesome Tony Bacall had a class at College of the Desert. So she invited me out to do a guest lecture for one of her media classes. Can't say how much of a lecture, the audio in this is probably terrible, but uh, it was fun to get up in front of the kids at a place where I took some classes and went to school back in the day and had a radio show there for uh, the community. Anyways, College of the Desert, great community college. If you're looking for a place to go, alma mater, recommend it. Oh, okay. nice. um, and then we started listening to your show and talking about, you know, what's great about your show and your interview skills. We listened to a little bit of like Iron Glass and kind of the difference and, and what makes, you know, your interviews so great. Okay. Um, is this a radio show? Like a class? What is, is this? Your radio? Is intro to radio? Yeah, like a yeah. radio part, like this is intro yeah, radio spot. production. Okay, so intro and radio production. The, you said you're talking about production as in like all forms of Yes. So cool. what we did last week is we covered media landscape. Nice. So we talked about commercial production and public, or sorry, commercial and public radio production, but also all the different types of production there, there are. Um, from film production, commercial, um, photography. Right. Because I want them cool. to be able to know there's so many different types okay. of production. Nice. Well, I'm not really a radio producer. That's actually not what I do. Um, but I have done a show here at College of the Desert. She probably wasn't playing my better work. That actually got blacklisted, and kicked off the air, and they said, this guy's the worst, worst ever. Um, but I'm back. So you wait long enough. Let's <laughs> back here. Patience. Um, time is good tested. A good product, right? So, are all you guys radio students? Is that like what you're studying, or is this kind of just like a general course? Like, what's your guys' focus? Radio students? So, this class, by the end of it, they're all going to produce a radio special. Okay, wow. 60 minutes. Okay, so you guys are all going to do your own special, a uh, different topics. What's your guys' like general majors? What, why did you take this class? Um, film and journalism. Okay. This is a for, uh, okay, cool. So this is a requirement. Major communications. I'm not really sure what I want to do. Marketing or TV or radio stuff. Creative stuff. Creative, great. That's what I do. Awesome. Anybody else? I'm an art major. And um, so I just picked this up because it was open and I love it. <laughs> I like the honesty. <laughs> I like the honesty. Okay, great. Well, I'll try to make it. Uh, Worthwhile since you guys are all paying to be here. Oh, I did tell them. And college is a bit of a hustle. So. I told them about um, the street, one of the music festivals. Yeah, did you guys go to any of those weird things? I didn't even know. <laughs> Damn, I didn't do a good job of promoting them. <laughs> um, I thought everyone would. Like, no. Um, I was the crazy person behind those. I put bands on a bus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or yeah. I put bands on a roof. I put bands pretty much just about anywhere. I mean, like, on the top or Oh, not, not on top. That would be crazy. Uh, <laughs> we put them inside safely. Bad yeah. Max. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, very regulated. There was a lot of ordinances. We couldn't do that. Um, cool. Well, my name's Ian Bush. Um, I've known each other for a long time. I've worked in all forms of production. Um, I've worked at agencies. I've run digital agencies. I've a company for years. Um, Commercial production, 
art department, I produced tons of TV commercials, uh, a lot of print ads, you probably see in terrible magazines. And uh, I also was one of the uh, founders. I ran the Coachella by Arts which is a nonprofit organization that serves Coachella Valley here. And we've done all kinds of events, and do art galleries, shows, all kinds of cool stuff. And you can still check them out if you're ever looking to get involved uh, in the community here. They're a great organization. It still does a lot of stuff around town, uh, especially for artists, for people who want to connect with the local community and do, you know, pretty much anything in space for you know, the visual arts, PDRs, arts, anything like that. Um, so check that out for sure. Just give the follow up that. Um, now, as far as radio production, I'm definitely not a radio voice, a radio host, or a radio producer. Um, the word producer is kind of a weird word. It's kind of a little bit like overused, very oversaturated. Kind of like the word entrepreneur. I hear it a lot. I'm not sure what it means anymore. Um, but if you produce things, it's making it, it's a product, right? There's an end result, there's a process to get there, and a producer helps facilitate that in whichever way possible. So um, whatever the end goal is, usually the producer is there to, to get you there. Um, the most traditional producer that people think of is TV or uh, film. A film producer is probably the most different out of all of them. Generally, production credits are given uh, as a producer, people put up all the money. Uh, so if you produce a movie, usually it usually means you get tons of money and everybody else does the work. Um, in the commercial production world, production generally refers to the people that actually do the work. And so that's kind of the difference of where you get. So um, high level production credits are generally for financiers. Like, <laughs> But in the, in the commercial production world, there's generally a way that things work. There's an infrastructure of things, right? So you have uh, the client, the client would be whoever's going to receive the end product, whether it be, let's say, Coca-Cola. And then you have the agency. The agency is the creative agency, that agency, sexy job, there, the ones that okay? They're the ones that represent the client. And then you've got to get to the end result. They want to produce a commercial. So and so they call up and say, like, hey, we want this badass commercial for the Super Bowl. You know, um, what are you going to do for us? So they go into a meeting, they come up with all these cool ideas, and they ride on the board, they spend all night, and then they show up and they pitch them, they pitch them to the client. To the, client. And the client inevitably takes the worst one and says, that's the one we want to do. And all the creatives <laughs> bash their head against the table and go, fuck, oh, really? That one? Okay. But the agency actually doesn't do anything besides come up with the idea. Then they call a production company. The producers put together all the talent. That's the person who's going to film it. That's uh, all the rigs. That's all the location. That's all the lighting. That's the art department. That's the craft service. That's uh, permits. You've got to have tons of permits. You know, what you're doing. Uh, insurances and things like that. So it all gets put together. That gets bid on and presented to the agency. Accepts it, and then everybody shows up, and then that location, and they try to make a commercial or a product that doesn't suck to get back to you. Does production um, choose the, the actors? Uh, generally, no. Usually, there's an open call, and everybody sits in on that. So, usually, the agency and the client choose them directly. Uh, production is usually involved in uh, making sure that they can show up. Judge. But that's usually all predetermined. So, you, unless they're really hands on, you won't see much production career if you guys ever get a chance to choose talent. Um, and that's kind of how it works for print, it's kind of how it works for radio. Um, radio title producers are a little different, right? So, I mean, like if you're a producer of radio, you're in control of the nature of the content, the host. Do in the end of the product. Um, so I know you guys probably will be doing more stuff like sweepers, the promos for your show, and the uh, structure, that's the only interview structure, that's the length of duration, uh, schedule, all that non-word stuff. Right? <laughs> that's 
that's kind of like, the, that's the job of it, right? So the thing is, I assume you guys all work somewhere in like the creative field, media field of some sort. And so you're here at college trying to figure that out, which is like, actually it's good that you guys are at a community college because I think, especially with the way the world is now, there's not really a clear set major or path to work in that industry. It's kind of like, you just gotta do it, you know? And colleges don't, aren't really doing a great job of educating people for jobs. Um, so I would say, my biggest takeaway I would say is show up here and put in the work, because this is a great test facility, it's a great place to actually do things, and walk away with actual productions, things you've done or have some hands-on experience, because no one's ever gonna hire you Especially nowadays, because you have a degree in a year. So you have to do Great. You know, you work, work in film. And you could go to NYU and it'd still be like, that's cool, you want a PA for 12 years? You know, <laughs> sure. That's that's the route. Like, you know, the guy working on set right now, making 200 a day as a PA, probably has a better shot at being the next big director than someone that's in film school. Unless Or do like fuck yeah, no Sure. <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah. Uh, exactly. So that's that's it's an interesting world you guys are in. I'm sure you all can find creative niches. I would say if you put your passion for sure, that definitely gets you a long ways there. Um, some good artists, what kind of art do you do? Uh the uh, most kind of What kind? Not really specific. Non specific art. <laughs> like any type of media or you just Digital, fake, film. Oh, cool. See, that's the awesome thing is you can come here and you can figure out what you want to do. It's not costing you a ton of money. What's a unit here these days? Um, I think the classes are like 100 students, I think. That's not bad. So you're like, you need a second for like one to three classes and then like other people are going to the day. Yeah. So it's super affordable. So this is a this is a nice test ground. So I want to know some of the things that you guys are doing to take advantage of it. This is like a lab class, right? Like this is a lab class in producing creative ideas. So Tony told me that you guys have a picture or something that you could, yeah, we have, you're going to be responsible for creating that, which is terrifying. I was going to ask you, because the, the new show Brainstorm is on March 8th. Yeah. And so they each have to come up with three ideas for shows. And so Great. that's an assignment. And, and then one of those ideas has to be an idea for Special for us to do at the end of the semester. Um, so, what's your advice? I was just reading an article like 10 ways to brainstorm. And like, one, yeah. <laughs> like, what's your advice for brainstorming ideas? Because How many of you guys have your ideas all figured out? You already know what you're going to do. How many of you have like, yeah. the, That's the assignment that comes in a couple weeks. But um, you only have to do one special. But. Well, the number one thing I would say is always that. The only thing that's ever going to get you to come up with good ideas is deadline. Um, <laughs> okay, well, how do you cope with deadlines? That's it. Give yourself right. a deadline. Like, show me you want. March 8th. Show me March 8th. You better have one March 8th. Otherwise, you're going to fail this class. This would be a terrible class to fail, too. You guys should all get it in. <laughs> <laughs> deadlines. Deadlines are great because the thing is, is it one of the, the, the paramount things in production is the things you've done? Production schedule. It's all about getting things done on time. Um, so I'd say in the creative world, there's kind of this idea of like how oh, like the creative idea will come to me. Like it's sitting <laughs> out in the cloud and you're just like jogging along and being like, damn, oh, that's my new show. That's, that's sick. Yeah. yeah. But the problem is, is that sometimes good ideas do come to you spontaneously. But what happens when somebody comes to you and they say, I need a good idea. Today. Now it becomes a problem. It, like, as things get condensed, your, your time to float around and wait for inspiration to strike you becomes stuck. Stuck. Like, you really have to come up with one. Yeah, on a deadline. Yeah. Go, right? Oh my god, you're nervous. That's the worst. This is like a shotgun when you get tight. 
The best thing is you gotta get loose. All of you, you gotta get loose, right? <laughs> you wanna get an idea? This guy said get drunk. I mean, that probably works for some people, right? Because they're fair, they get nervous, they get drunk, and they're like, oh, whatever, they just put out <laughs> crazy things on the board, and then they come back later and they're like, what was I thinking? This is terrible. But it's a start, right? Yeah, and so right you gotta get the ball rolling. And that's the number one thing. So, like, a lot of times what I'll do is if I've got to come up with something and I feel stuck, I'm like, okay, my favorite is like 10 bad ideas. Just, I'm going to come up with 10 of the stupidest things that I could ever come up with. And then that's, there's less pressure because you already have prefaced them that they're not going to be good. And so coming up with a good idea is really hard. Coming up with a bad idea is really easy. You know, so it's like, kind of like if you want to learn a new language, the easiest words to learn are smart words, right? It's like, those are fun. You know, <laughs> you just choose choose the bad and then work your way back into it. Because probably in some of those bad ideas, there's actually a really good idea. Yeah. The technique that I just read it. Nobody's slow. Someone had to do it, right? Yeah, someone had to. I mean, it's, actually, someone even had to write that book. And the funny thing about Fifty Shades of Grey is, Probably what made it most successful was that it had a really good name. And the third movie has a really terrible name. And so it, it's, it's around 50 Shades of Grey, it's basically an intriguing name. You're like, what is this? Like, is this a look up color theory? Uh -huh. um, no, it's an uh, erotic BDSM. No. Uh, but a good name, somebody came up with a good name. So I think good name sell, even though the writing was terrible. And the movie, I think we struggle too. <laughs> Everything was so. The, the, this, his future is going to be making like Fifty Shades of Grey revisited <laughs> over this year. So you're saying as long as you're just producing content or creating ideas, it helps you deal with the stress of deadlines? I think in the modern world now, content is as loose as it's ever been because there's so many platforms for it, they're so important. You know, a decade ago, there was like commercials and whatever it was, whatever you were producing, a radio show, it had to go on the radio. You know, now you can you can podcast, you can live stream, it. you can do it in 15 seconds clips on your Instagram story. You know what I mean? And it's still voice, it's still communicating, it's still the same nature of content that is a radio show. It's just less formal. And I think that the formality has changed so much. It was like things used to be a big production. The only thing we ever saw was, you know, big produced TV shows. But now, like, you know, you can put two LED lights in your iPhone and have your own show every day, right here, before you start class, you know, and you can just put it out. And I think that when you're trying to start creating content, because it's really what all you get to do, content creators, I mean, that's what advertising is. It's just content that's paid for by a company as a delivery. So like, if you get a magazine, they put in words and information and cool photos that you want to look at, only so they can deliver you advertisements that you also have to look at. And so it's like, if you watch a TV show, the commercials are in between. The commercials pay for the TV show. The, the delivery vehicle is the, the, the TV show. It's the drama or whatever you're watching. That's what gets you to watch it. But what pays for all that is actually the commercials. The commercials are there to be kind of inconvenienced and given. So that is the, really the driving force. And so all the content creators are really in the business of selling advertising. No matter what you, you have a radio show, you're in the business of selling advertising, especially on a large formal show. So you gotta create content. You're a content creator. So you, you can do that in so many forms, whether it's just a simple podcast here at PCMP, turn on the mic, you sit down with somebody, right? That's the easiest. One microphone, two microphone. Hi, how are you doing today? All right, good. We're going. We're, we're recording information. We're like chugging along. You don't even have to edit it, right? You just download it and put it up. And you're like, hey, check out my talk with uh, Tony McCall. And maybe somebody listens to it. I had a question for yeah. you. So, did you, you always want to like, Started like here at the college, right? Yeah, I did go here. I went to College of the Desert 2002 and 2000. Did you want to be a producer when you wanted to like start? No, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. All I knew was I wanted to get the hell out of here. Um, <laughs> so I took a bunch of classes and I went, I went to Cal State Fullerton to the business school there, business school business. And then um, 
kind of worked my way back into it. I started, um, yeah, but I was in the point with Paul, was like, where was your start? Did you feel like the podcast or radio announcing? Or? Yeah, no, I, I never done really any radio. I actually started my first introduction to any type of production stuff was actually working in advertising. Um, and we were responsible for working with a lot of clients that were looking for platforms to deliver their clients um, places where they can advertise, which is really you know, a lot of what advertising did. And being the young guy at the time, I was um, driving a lot of stuff towards blogs, you know, like blogs and Twitter, and podcasters. And a lot of podcasters, and I was like, hey, you know, like, you'd be surprised at how many people actually listen to these that are targeted. My ads are pretty cheap. Uh, podcasters make a lot of money now. Uh, a lot of podcasters make more than your regular radio hours. Uh, you'd be surprised at how much money If you go on your iTunes and you look at the top of the podcasters, they're crushing it. Right now, they're, they're crushing it. You're, you're better off today having a podcast in the top five on iTunes than you are being on any radio station. Anywhere, unless maybe you're like, you know, syndicated worldwide. I mean, but if you're like a host in, you know, Missoula or Mississippi or something, no, you're, you're better off having a podcast that you're better than listening to the podcast. Because you, the, the amount of ads and the interstitial ads that they do, they're making crazy. Everybody can do a podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. So I kind of got into to those real informal, you know, then the production quality and everything was really informal. I got on those, I left. Um, I started my own agency. We were primarily focused on digital, so we did a lot of web development, uh, you know, photo, just getting companies online, you know. Yeah, back then, yeah, back then no one had investments. It was, you know, like 2005. Most companies, most people barely have websites. Now everyone has a website. No one goes there anymore. It's like now it's through social media, every time. But there's an evolution. And so we went from very, very like rigid, small areas where people could do content. You know, and there's still very valuable. The radio, 